Hey everyone, this is Tokan Sharma here and it's been a while since I haven't uploaded any videos but I'm back again and this time we'll be building data tables using Laravel, LiveWar and AlpineJS. So if you have watched my previous version where I built a LiveWar data table, so I only used uh, LiveWar in that version. In order to make those DOM updates as well, it makes a uh, request to the server, so which is not very performant. So in this tutorial, we'll be looking at integrating LiveWar and AlpineJS. So in order to update the DOM related stuff, we can use Alpine and in order to perform database related transaction, we can use LiveWar. So a combination of both is really easy to work with and also really amazing. So in case if you haven't watched the previous one, I'll just walk you through the features that we'll be implementing. So the first thing is pagination. So this is quite simple. We'll be using LiveWire for that. The other one is search. So we'll also be using LiveWire for this. We won't need Alpine for this search feature. The next one is filtering by classes. The other one is selecting multiple items. So we can use Alpine for stuff like these. So this is where JavaScript really shines and we can use client side JavaScript to perform all of these stuff. So it won't make, make any request to the server. The other step thing is maybe uh, yep, we can select all the items and the state is maintained accordingly and we can bulk delete them, export them. We can delete single items. We can sort the data by multiple columns and yep. That is it. We'll be implementing all of these features. So we'll be learning a lot of stuff, including some factory techniques, integrating LiveWire and AlpineJS. We'll be looking at Xcloak and Entangle. So basically uh, some new tricks. If you don't know, we'll be learning some new stuff. And yep, it's going to be interesting. So I hope to see you in the next one. So in this video, we'll be looking at setting up the basic stuff like database migrations, uh, defining models, looking at the database structure to see how it looks like. And by the way, I have created a new repo called uh, LiveWire Alpine Data Tables. And I have uh, set up some basic stuff here like, uh, so if I open up, open that up in my Visual Studio code. So I just modified the welcome blade and let me just increase the font size. I think that's too much. Okay, so I have Define the title, define include the fonts and bootstrap and we'll be rendering the LiveWire component here and also the JavaScript required JavaScript files and the font awesome link. So we'll be using some icons as well. And the next step is to look at our database structure. So if we go ahead and I'm I wanted you to introduce to a tool called DB diagram. So here we can basically define database structures and look at how all these tables relate to each other like the foreign key relationships and everything so if we look at our database structure for the data tables then we have a students table where a student have their primary id each uh, each students belong to a class and section so a class can have many students and section can also have many students so that is as many and belongs to relationship and student has name email address and phone number so that's our data structure database structure and each class has id and name so you can also add other fields if you want but i'm gonna keep it simple so that's for our database so let's open up our visual studio code and create up some models so the first one is gonna be student model and i'm gonna create migration and controller so let's go to our model i think okay let's go to the migrations first and let's define the database each student is gonna have a name an email which is gonna be unique okay that's fine phone number that could be unique as well it's gonna have address and okay we also need okay i think first we need to do what we need to do is we need to define the classes i'll just delete this and also delete the controller and models and first let's create a classes model so artisan make 
and by the way we cannot use class name here because class is a preserver in php so we can't really use that so we'll be using classes that is in the plural form and make model classes minus mc so okay only migration and controller that's done and let's go to the migration and we only need string name that's it let's sort these imports and that's done let's go to the model and define the fillable property that's done automatically by github copilot so these are just basic stuff and the next step is what we are going to do is okay we have defined the class and we need to define the sections so artisan make model section minus mc let's go to the migration and then define the string name and i think each section also belongs to a class so we need to define a table for an id class id constraint to classes on delete cascade so that's what we want so i'm just gonna update the db diagram as well so each section is gonna have a class id class id that's gonna be of type integer and it references classes dot id so this is a kind of uh, one to many relationships so a class can have many sections and a section belongs to a class so has many and belongs to relationship so that's done and let's go to the model as well define the fillable property and also define the relationship so yeah github copilot is really intelligent in this case so classes this has many classes class okay i think class okay that would be a preserved word we could use class i think in this case if we get any issues then we will update it later and we also need to update the foreign id so in this case that's gonna be class id this section has many classes okay i think this should belong to classes yep. and the next step is okay these all are done so we need to define student model so now we can do is artisan make model student minus mc so that's going to create a migration and the controller as well so let's go to the migration and okay have that and we also need the class id and section id so table for an id section id constrained to sections on delete cascade and we also need the class id accordingly so i'll just copy this and update it accordingly so that's gonna be class and classes okay this should set everything up for our database and the next step is to work on the factories and cedars so let's create a factory classes factory and the model is going to be classes so we are not going to define anything for the classes factory because we'll be on naming the giving the names of the class manually while defining the factory while defining the cedars so we are only going to define the skeleton like a skeleton factory for the classes and sections artisan make factory section factory and the model is going to be section so these two factories are done and the last one that we need to do is student factory and the model is going to be student so let's go ahead and define the skeleton for our student factory so that's going to be inside okay we will be defining a classes cedar and in that we'll be making all the stuff uh, setting everything up so let's also create a cedar and the name is going to be classes cedar so let's go to cedars and classes cedar so here we are gonna we are gonna define a class cedar and each class can have many sections and a section can have many students so that way we'll be defining the cedar for our classes so i'm just gonna paste a code in here and then we will i will walk you through each and every steps so to see what it does so let's import the models first and then we'll see how it goes so section and by the way i'm typing in control ki that will automatically import my classes 
and sequence also needs to be imported and that's the type of eliminate database element factory se sequence we also need to define uh, import the student model so now what we are going to do is we are defining the classes factory and we'll be defining 10 classes so class 1 1 to 10 and then each of the class what it's uh, what it is going to do is uh, so we can define the attributes for the class like uh, properties for the class for let's say we have name so for each name is going to define class and then a space and then sequence index so it's going to start from 0 to 9 so like a for each loop so from class so the first iteration is going to be class and sequence index is going to be 0 so we are adding 1 so that it would be 1, 0 plus 1 that's going to be 1 so the first iteration is going to be name is going to be class 1 and accordingly class 2 3 4 until 10 so each class has sections so we need to define a relationship for this thing we haven't i think so let's go to classes model and define our sections uh, relationship so classes has sections and has many section class and the foreign id is going to be class id so each class has section and we are going to define two sections for each class section a and section b so the section factory is going to be used in here the skeleton section factory it doesn't have anything so we are manually defining that in here so section factory and define two sections and the state is going to be used to define the sequence so like uh, it's going to use one um, array for first sequence and the second one the second iteration so since we are defining two sections in the first iteration this will be used and in the second iteration this one will be used so you can define in many as many sequences if you want we will also do three count and then define a section c here so to further uh, clarify this if we had a count of six then what it would do is it would go to this sequence on the first iteration it would take this on the second it would take this on the third it would take this and then on the fourth part again it would start from here so this is a really convenient way to define our states and everything so in our case we are only define gonna define uh, two sections for a single class so each gonna each is gonna have a name of section a and section b and a section has uh, many students so we need to go to the section model and define a student fact student relation as well so public function students this has many student class and so now student factory so for each section we are going to define five students so let's say we have for the first one we have section a so section a is going to have five students and for each student we are defining a state where we are taking the previous section in here so array of attributes is basically we can use these attributes are the values for the student model so we can modify the existing attributes as well so you can uh, check out the docs for this i may link it in the description below so for each section we are going to define a class id where the id is going to be sections class id so it's going to define that relation accordingly so I will summarize it once again so we are defining a class factory with an total amount of 10 and for each class we are defining a sequence where we are giving it a name of class 0 plus 1 so first one is going to be 1 2 3 until 10 and it has many sections so for each class we are defining two sections with a name of section A and section B and each section has many students so each section is going to give we are going to define five students with a state where the class id is going to be the class id of the existing section that we are iterating through so since we are iterating through this section we are going to get a value of this section created in this loop so and then at the end we call the create function we could okay yes we are calling the create function so it's going to run 10 times okay let's save this and 
let's go ahead and run artisan make migration i think it's gonna be migrate fresh and then we are also gonna seed it let's run this command and see if we get any errors and then we'll debug debug it accordingly okay so we have defined the migrations and then okay to seed it i think we need to go to database seeder and then call so we need to call the classes seeder otherwise you won't get these those data seeded so let's run that command once again okay we have uh, an issue here field name doesn't have a default value inserting the students okay we also need to define a student factory so we don't have the definition in here so i'll just copy and paste it so for the student factory we are defining name so we are going to use faker and then name email is going to be a unique safe email phone number is going to be phone number so these are all given by provided by the faker library so let's save it and run the migrations once again and everything worked out really well so let's go ahead i'm just going to reload it because i had the migrations i ran the migrations earlier as well so if we go ahead and look at live our alpine data tables and look at classes we have class 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and look at sections we have section a b okay a, b for each of the classes and if we look at students then we should have around okay 100 total because for each class we had two sections and for each section we had five students so total of 100 so okay our migrations and database seeding everything worked really well in the second part we'll be looking at defining the data table and then implementing the pagination feature so that's it for now and i'll see you in the next one in this part we'll be looking at installing livewire alpine.js and defining a component and then defining the basic styling of our data table so let's start by installing livewire i'll just copy it and open up my terminal and paste it here and the next step is to include livewire styles let's paste that here and also livewire scripts this should go at the bottom that's done now let's create a component i'm gonna name it students list and then to render that component we need this code so we are gonna render that in here okay i think so now if we include that livewire component in here then we get these go to completion from id so if you click on it then we get redirected to the view page of the component so this is working fine and now i want to paste a simple data table design so we don't have to do it from scratch and i don't want to waste my time doing that because it's all bootstrap so i'll just paste it so i'm going to paste that uh, markup for the table and for convenience i am including some information like where to include the flash messages and all the placeholders are included here so if we go ahead so for the pagination and everything so if we go ahead and look at the browser we can see that we have a simple design so for now what i want to do is i want to display all the data that we have on our database to this table so let's go ahead and what i want to do is i want to loop through each of the data so that's going to be for each students as student so let's shift this up remove that extra space and now i'm going to put the data here so i'll just uh, fill this data and be right back so i've defined all the uh, properties for the student model and also the relation for the class and section so if we haven't defined we'll get an error and we'll fix it later so let's go ahead and reload the browser okay so we are getting an attempt to read property name on null on student class so we probably haven't defined the relation so let's open up the model and let's define a new relation that's gonna be class and which is gonna be return this belongs to classes and class id so we have defined the foreign key as class id and we need to do the same for section 
so github copilot is really intelligent in that case so class and section is defined let's save that and go ahead and reload so now we have all the hundred records that we had in that's done and one last thing that we need to do is we need to go to the student model and grab all the students from the database so let's go to students list and in here let's define an array okay i think this is what we need we need students where the model is student model with class and section and we want to get that so let's save that and let's go ahead and reload the browser so now as you can see and i just reloaded my browser and we have all the data like the 100 records that we seeded from the database and in the next one we'll be looking at implementing the pagination using livewire so let's go ahead and do that so in this part we'll be looking at implementing pagination as well as wire modeling this so that whenever we change this value the table reflects that value accordingly so for that let's go to the live by documentation and find the pagination part okay then we have that here and we need to use this trait use with pagination in our live wire component let's paste that and we need to import that let's save it and we also need to paginate that so for that what i'm going to do is define a new property called public paginate and i'm going to keep it to 10 by default and so since we need to paginate it so we'll just call the paginate function here with the value of this paginate so we are accessing this variable using this keyword so now this is going to be paginated by 10 records so let's reload and we only have 10 records so we need to display the pagination links as well so for that let's go to the view and paste that here students links so this is the function that displays the pagination links so let's reload and our design doesn't look so good so i think there's some issue with the bootstrap version so if we go ahead and look at welcome.blade then we are using bootstrap 5 and so for that what we need to do is in our app service provider we need to tell laravel to use bootstrap version 5 for the pagination so for that i'll just Go ahead and copy your code so we need to use that in our boot method and let's import that class which is eliminate pagination paginator let's save that and go ahead and reload the page okay we still have that issue so so one more step that we need to do is we need to tell livewire to use the bootstrap theme for pagination so I guess by default it uses Tailwind. So we need to customize that. And we do that on the component itself. So let's go to the student list and paste that here. So pagination stream is gonna be bootstrap. So let's go ahead and reload once again. Okay, now it looks good. Now we can go through these pages and pagination is working fine for now so the last thing that we need to do is we need to hook this up so that's quite simple on the students list what we have here is we have a select form here so what we need to do is we need to just model this thing with the paginate property so whenever we change this so since we are hooking this up with wire model for the paginate property so whenever this value changes paginate is going to update and on the students list model this value is going to change and our form is going to re-render every time the paginate value changes since it depends on this property so let's go ahead and reload and let's select 20 okay we are getting 20 results and we have five pages since we are 
we have a total of 100 records so this thing is working and yep we are good to go in the next part we are going to be implementing the filtering by class and section yep that's going to be an interesting one to work on so see you in the next one so in this part we'll be looking at filtering by class and section so what do we need to do to implement that so first we need a list of classes to choose from and then once we select any class then we need to we need to get all the sections belonging to that class and then if we click on section then we need to filter that we need to filter the students by that selected section so that's the general flow so in order to display all the classes what we need to do is we need to pass all the classes data so here what we did is app models classes all so that's fine so let's go to the list and filter by class in here we'll look through it so let's do for each classes as class i think we can use this so it have copilot did the work so value is going to be class id and then label is going to be class name let's reload let's save that and reload and now we can see all the classes that we have on our database so how are we gonna track which class has been selected and how do we get all the sections for a certain class so for that we have i think they are called property life cycles or something so we can run functions whenever a certain property changes so let's say and we also need to create keep track of which class is selected so we'll look that look into that in a minute so let's go to i think it's properties and lazy updating binding nerd properties custom variable properties computer properties construct okay let's search for updated property something they are called i think okay we don't have that here okay i think they are called yep life cycle hooks so now what we can do is whenever a class changes we can call that function like if you have selected class then we can define a function called updated selected class and then we'll in that function we'll get all the sections of that selected class so first let's go to our model and define two properties the first is gonna be selected class that's gonna be null and we also need a selected section so that's gonna be both are gonna be null by default and we are gonna wire model this here so on the select we can wire model it with selected class so now what's going to happen is whenever we this value changes we are going to run a function so using that lifecycle hook so the way we define that is by creating a function with updated and then the property name so in this case it's going to be selected class okay i'll just look into it property called foo is updated so this is going to execute whenever the property called foo is updated so now let's go ahead and die dump class change and so i just want to test it out first so we are modeling this with a selected class property and whenever selected class changes we will be executing this function so the lifecycle hook comes into action and executes this function so let's go ahead and we need to reload and if i select class one so class changed that's inside students list line number 26 so this is working fine so what we need to do here so i think we also need sections property so public sections is going to be an empty array at first and whenever the selected class is changed so we also get a value for the the changed value as a parameter so as an argument 
I think it's called parameter okay so whenever we change the class what we are gonna do is we are gonna update the sections with so we are gonna use the section model where the class ID is gonna be value and then we'll get them so this is quite simple and now we need to display those sections so here what we can do is since we have the sections property in here so we can use that property and loop over all the sections so let's define a for each loop and then loop over all of the sections so that's going to be an option with a value of section id and the label is going to be section name let's save that and let's go ahead and reload so now we don't have any section for here in here and if i select class one then we'll get section a section b so that gets populated as well so what we also want to do is i don't want to display this until we have selected a certain class so if we have a value in selected class only then i want to display it so now if i go ahead and reload then only when i select a class then we get this value so that looks good and the last thing that we need is we also need to model this with wire model it with selected section so that whenever we change this value we will rerun our query so i'm going to introduce you to a new i think they are called custom properties or computer properties in livewire so they are really handy and if we go ahead and look at properties we have the computer properties in here so what we can do is if this so by default what happens is if we define a computer property called get post property so this is gonna run every time it something that it depends on updates so in this case if we have this post id so since it depends on post id so whenever post id updates this property is gonna re-execute so this example doesn't make much sense because post id won't change so often but in our case the class and section updates and then we need to re-execute uh, re the property so what we are going to do is okay let's go ahead and define a new property get students query property and the way we call them is by just just like in accessors in laravel so they have a convention called get and property they should be appended at the end and beginning so we'll only be using the students query while referring these properties so I think it's used somewhere in here get post property and then so this post delete so that's how it used so in here what we are gonna do is return student so we are just gonna build a simple model in here like a query builder so with class and section so I think this should be wrapped inside an array and this should be imported student with class and section so what we want to do is we want to rerun whenever the class id changes so we need to check if we have a class so we are going to run a query function query the query where the class id is going to be this selected class and this is going to be the same for the selected section as well query where the section id is going to be this selected section so now since we are defining a computer property so if uh, in whenever this selected class or selected section changes this query is going to return so how do we use this query so for that what we are going to do is instead of using this we are going to call students query and github copilot is really intelligent so what we are going to do is we are going to call students query and then paginate on that result so that's what you really want so in order to test this we need to go to the browser reload the page and let's see i'm gonna select 
class one so as you can see we don't have any pagination links now the liveware did all the reactivity related stuffs in here so we are only seeing the students from class one since we haven't selected any section so we are seeing the class students from both sections let's select class five so that you can properly see what's going on so class five section a and b but if i want to select section a then we get section a so there's a small bug in here that you'll notice while you use it so if i go ahead and select class 7 then i don't see any data what could be the problem in here but if i select section a then we get the results or section b but if i now again select class 3 you don't see any data so how can you fix this so what's actually happening is if i select class section a the select section value sets to section a and if i select now another class then we have that value set for section as section a so for that we don't get any results so the way we fix that is by so whenever the class is updated what we need to do is reset the value of selected section so it's going to set it to null again and now if we reload and select a class and then select a section and then again select a class then we can see that we are getting all the results for class 7 so that was a small bug and i think that's it for this video and in the next one we will be looking at implementing this search functionality that's also a simple one so i'll see you in the next one so in this video we'll be looking at implementing the search functionality and that should be quite simple as well so let's go ahead and on the student model first we are gonna do i think let's go to the component first and define a property that's gonna be search and it's gonna be an empty string let's model that with the what's that our search form okay in here so wire model is gonna get modeled with the search property and now let's go to our student model and define a new scope let's name it search and it's gonna receive the builder okay it's not showing that auto completion okay yes so the builder query we are gonna get the query builder and let's name it query and we are also gonna receive a term that the user searches so that's the search value and in here what we are going to do is we are going to first reassign our term query search term with the wildcard percentage sign so if you have done perform search before then you probably know that we use the like query to perform search across models so now what we are going to do here is return the query okay i think we can what we can do is we can make changes to this so where name is going to be like term or where we won't need this where the phone number is gonna be like the term email is gonna be like the term or the address is gonna be like the term so we are getting an error i think let's see if we get any errors then we'll fix it later so now we have defined the scope now time to use it where do we use it we can use that while we are getting the students query so here just like when we can use the scope on the model and the way we define this we call the scope is by calling the search so if you haven't used the scope before the way we use that is by so we have the convention of writing scope and then the name so we omit the scope part and only include the remaining value so in this case it's search so we are only going to call search and our term is gonna be what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim the white spaces so it's gonna trim the white spaces from the beginning and the end and then pass in the search value so I think this is gonna work now let's go ahead and reload and okay let's search for H I R A M okay this looks good we can also search for phone numbers 906 yep that's working fine we also have 906 here so that's searching through multiple models and i think what we also need to do is add a defer property so that we make 
less request to the server the debouncing input we can also use the lazy but so by default is 150 milliseconds but we are going to change it to 500 dot debounce dot 500 milliseconds okay it's not defer so defer is only used when you want to make request on the next batch so let's save this and check it out h-i-r-a-m okay it only made one request in 500 milliseconds intervals so yep that looks good and for now we don't have the searching through class in section if we look out class one we don't get any results so what i want to do is also want to implement that so that you can implement the source through multiple models or relation so if you are wondering how we do that that's also quite simple so we also need to include the or here so that it's also going to search through the relationship so in this case where the class is going to be class name is going to be like this term and i think we can apply the same for the section as well so let's copy this and or where the section it's going to be like this term so let's reload and search for class one okay we are getting two results because class one in class 10 as well we have class one so yeah that's working fine we don't have class two okay we are on page two so we got that error so let's see if we search for class two then we are getting 10 results yep that's working fine and let's also test it for section A. So we should get 50 records. Yes, that's working fine. So that's it for the search feature. In the next part, we'll be looking at, I think we'll be looking at deleting these records. So bulk selection and selecting multiple items from the list. So see you in the next one. Okay, so in this video, we'll be looking at selecting multiple records and displaying the amount of items that we have checked and then also we'll be looking at deleting single records and in the next parts we'll be looking at other stuff so i think we can also do the deleting multiple records at once that should be kind of similar so let's go ahead and implement that so first what we need is let's go to the students list component the view file and so here we are going to use alpine.js and initialize some data so the first one is going to be a checked array which is going to keep track of all the items that we have that we have currently checked so to maintain the state we are going to define a checked array and then what we can do is model that to our checkbox so i think this is something we are going to implement later I forget to remove that so okay this is the body so in here we have the td the value is gonna be the student id for this row and we are gonna model that with our checked array so in order to debug this thing what we can do is we have i guess alpine dev tools which we need to install Alpine JS Dev Tools for Firefox. Okay, let's click on it. Add to Firefox. Okay, and if we reload this, I think we need to hard refresh. So the reason why this was not working is because we never really included the CDN. So for that, what we need is the script tag. Go to our welcome page and include that here now what we can do is let's remove that let's remove this and refresh and we still don't get that do we need something else okay maybe we need to hard refresh it okay now we see it still it says alpine js not detected maybe had it has some issues and okay we don't have any data that's bad well, we do have x data checked okay i made a small mistake so we need to define this inside an object let's format this properly 
save it without formatting so now if we go ahead and reload we should see some data okay we have a checked array and since we have modeled that with our td with our checkbox here with the value of student id this should update whenever we select these items so previously we we implemented this using livewire but this time we are using alpine so this is more performant and and we are running everything on the client side so it won't have any it won't make any request to the server so that's a better approach and i think maintaining the states and all everything is also really good now so the next step is we have selected these items now i want to implement deleting these records with a confirmation dialog and also if the item is selected if the item that we are currently deleting is already checked then we also need to update the checked array accordingly so for that let's go to our alpine code and define a new function so we are going to define a function called delete single record and we are going to receive an id and here what we are going to do is okay this also is a better approach so let's try it out what's going to happen so it's first going to run confirm are you sure to do this record and then emit so we can use i think dollar wire dot emit delete single record and then we gonna pass the id so let's save this function and on the delete button we are gonna call that function the way we call that is by click so where do we have that we have this exon click and we also can use the at the rate click shorthand function so at the rate click what we are gonna do is call delete single record and then send the student id so the syntax highlighting doesn't get doesn't work so well in this case but our code is good actually so let's go ahead let's save that and we are going to emit so i think okay we should see the confirmation dialog if everything works fine reload click on delete okay we don't see that so that's there's some problem probably so this approach doesn't really work right so we are gonna do we are just gonna copy this function and i'm gonna remove this and only gonna emit on whenever we hit the single record on the button what we can do is we can add a new click listener so what this is gonna do is pass in a confirm dialog okay i think we can directly paste that confirm are you sure to delete this record and if that's true then what we need to do is event dot stop immediate propagation so this is a function that will stop the execution and return it immediately so we won't so this function won't be executed if we click the cancel button on the confirm so event dot stop immediate propagation this we need to call this function let me check it once okay that looks good so if we on the confirm we click ok then we will get to this function so we will call the delete single record pass in the student id and what i want to do here is let me just log okay we don't get to completion here console.log id and then emit it maybe we don't have this okay we can do this so now if we go ahead and reload and then click on delete so we get this confirmation dialog if we click on cancel nothing's gonna happen and okay we have here on Terry. okay if i click on okay then we should see console but we don't see it what could be the issue delete single record maybe i just need to copy that okay something's probably bad because we don't see the checked value as well and the function as well so maybe we should we can do it okay we have so github auto completion really messes you up sometimes so you need to look out yep now we have a function as well as a checked value and if we go ahead and click on delete and okay 
we still don't get that console value what could be the issue now okay so i was making some silly mistakes i just opted out these so that's why the output was not loading here so it happens sometimes so now what we can do is we can emit uh event so we are gonna emit and delete single record event and also we need to filter the data for the checked array where this dot checked so we are gonna perform the filter where the item is not equal equal to id so basically we are getting the items from the checked array so this item represents a single item and the id is the one that we receive as a parameter so we need to define this event on the live wire so how do we do that we go to the docs and see if check out events so we can emit post added so there are multiple ways we can emit and in order to listen to these events what we can do scoping events okay let's see okay let's define the listeners in student list let's define it here so delete single record i guess i read somewhere that if the listener name and the function name is same then we don't have to include both of these so i think i need to check that okay yep it's right here so if the name and key and the value are same then we can omit that and we can only define the listener or the single array so now we can define a function of this name and yep we need to define a method with this name and we get the id and yep that's how it's done so we are going to find the student and then delete it and then flash the message so the flash message we haven't included that so i'm going to include that in a bit so let's just test this out first so let's reload let's try to delete the first record click on delete cancel okay and yep that got deleted and i think we can implement one more stuff that is bulk deleting feature okay one more thing that i want you to show here show here is the show the this checked label conditionally so i think i've implemented that already i just want to show you how we can do that that's inside here okay not this i think it's here a search with checked yes so what we are doing here is we are showing this only if the checked dot length is greater than zero so we can also use x if but what x if does is it will remove the component completely and maybe uh, it requires more computation than x show so i'm just showing x show in this case so okay we also want to show the count in here so we how we can do that is we can use span we are not getting that auto completion and here we can use x text is gonna be checked dot length let's go ahead and reload it so now we have one two three that ui updated updates while we are selecting these records so that's good now let's last thing is i want to implement this bug delete feature so that would be kind of same as single deleting record so let's go ahead and define a new function that's gonna be delete multiple records we won't need the id in this case and so we need to only need to emit that function so wire emit delete multiple records we have the checked array so we'll send that and when do we call this function so that can be called when you click on delete so let's click add a at the rate click and we call delete multiple records and by the way you can also add the on click the confirmation dialog just like we did earlier oh where's that i think it's in the button so i'll just copy these and paste it in here confirm are you sure i'm going to delete these records event that's done and whenever we click on ok 
this function get, gets executed and we emit it. So I think one more thing that we need to do is we need to, okay, let's do the delete part first and then we'll work on other stuffs. So let's copy this and define a new listener. Delete multiple records and then also define the function. We get the array of checked items and student wherein id is this id and then delete and then we'll flash it so that looks good let's test it out what if i want to delete these two records i click on delete i get the confirmation dialog click on cancel nothing happens again click on delete and then okay okay we got we deleted those two records so notice one more bug in here is that we click on delete okay we deleted but we have still have this we checked in here so what we need to do is we need to reinitialize the checked array to empty since we deleted those items so now if we go ahead and delete click on okay those items get deleted and the checked array also initializes to empty and the checked array again gets assigned to an empty array so that's i think this is uh, we are going to implement only this much for this tutorial in the next part i'll be looking at implementing these selecting multiple items like if i click on this then we are going to select all the items in this page and we'll get a confirmation dialog to select all of the items and if i click on select all then all of the items throughout the tables will be selected so that feature we are going to implement in the next part so i'll see you guys in the next one okay so in this video we'll be looking at selecting all of the records in this page or if we want to further select all of them so maybe selecting all of the records on all of the pages so that functionality we are going to be implementing in this one so for that we need to understand a few stuffs so what if i want to select all of the records of this page so for that we need to track how many data we have in this page right so that we can select we can put all of the ids in the checked array and then perform the other actions accordingly so let's say we have for now 10 items uh, we are fascinating 10 items at a time so what if i select 20 then that changes to 20 items so we need to know how many records we have we are currently displaying in a certain page so another thing is how many records total records we have in the database so to select all of the records and put them in the checked array so those are the two stuffs we need to take care of so for that we'll define two properties one is gonna be students in page so which is gonna keep track of all the students data uh, displayed in this current page and the other one is gonna be all the students so all the students data on the database so like displayed in all of the other pages as well so for that we need to go and define two properties that's gonna be students in page and students all students and these are gonna be an array of items so they are gonna be empty arrays by default and whenever so how do we keep track of these things i want you to think about it and probably try something up and if you don't get uh, if you can't come up with a solution then you can follow along and even even if you did get a solution then i recommend you to watch it so that you can learn from my solutions or we can discuss those solutions further in the comments so i'm gonna give my solutions now so what we are gonna do is we are gonna define a new computer property where one is gonna be the paginated property and the other one is gonna be the non-paginated property so, so let's say in this case we have the non-paginated data so we are returning all of the data in here and while we are sending the data to the view only then we are paginating it so we are gonna 
so basically these students data that get passed in here are the records on the current page and this student query property represents all of the data so this is how we are gonna keep track so first i'm gonna define a new get students property so this is gonna display keep track of the records for the current paginated data so what we can do here is we can make use of the existing students query and then paginate with the value of this paginate so now this students property computer property is going to keep track of the current records in the current page and the students query property is going to keep a track of all of the records in the database so we can now send it like this so if we go ahead and reload then we can see that we don't have any changes in the data and everything is working as usual so the next thing that we want to do is we have students in page and all students so what we want to do is on whenever this component mounts then we want to calculate how many students we are currently displaying in a page and how many total students we have so keep a record of all of the data displayed in the page so let's define the mount function and here we are going to assign all students is going to be this students query since it's it's going to keep a track of all of the data and we are going to pluck the id and then convert that to an array because all students in uh, is an array and we are going to do the same thing for the students in page as well so i'll just copy this and students in page is going to be students not students query but only students and then plug the id and then convert that to an array so now if we go ahead and i think we have live wire in here could not establish okay detector dot js maybe live wire is not working in this case so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna die dump this data and see what we have here so we have 10 items for the students in page and then 93 items for the students all students query all students array so once this is done what we are going to do is we are going to use the entangle feature if you already know or not we have an entangle feature in alpine i think that's okay we need okay that's inside live wire i guess alpine js yep we have this so we can what we can actually do is using entangle we can sync a certain variable between live wire and alpine js so basically entangle a live wire and alpine property so it keeps them in sync so for that what we need to do is we need to define the entangle with the entangle property we can define them on the alpine js side as well so the way we do this is by defining the property first so i'm gonna name them same you can name them different students in page is gonna be entangle students in page and all students is gonna be entangle all students so now to see this in action what we can do is open the alpine js dev tools and all, all students has an array of 93 items and students in page has an array of 10 items so what i want to do is i also want to update this value whenever i change the pagination value so let's say if i'm selecting 20 now our page changes to 20 records but we don't we haven't updated the students in page so whenever we select this array we our items only the 10 items first 10 items are going to be selected and the remaining 20 remaining 10 are not going to be selected so we also need to keep that in sync so how do we do that well we have lifecycle properties so we can check for a change for this paginate property and then update the array accordingly so how do we do that we can do is update paginate I think it's update paginate or updated paginate. Okay, yes, it's updated paginate. So whenever this paginated 
paginate property changes we are going to call this function and what we are going to do is we are only going to update the students in page property to this students and then pluck the id to array that's pretty simple because the students is an is an computer property so it's going to have that value of the paginated reflected in this query as well and it's going to update the students in page property so we are going to get all of the students so not the students query so student query keep track of all of the student records across all the pages this students computer property this pro computer property only keep tracks uh, keeps track of the current page so we are getting all these students and then plucking the id and then converting that to an array so now if we go ahead and reload the page check our model check our component select 20 then as you can see we have 20 items in that array so now what we can do is whenever we select this checkbox we can populate the checked array with this item this students in page property and that should be pretty simple to implement so where do we do that we need so in order to update our pages accordingly we are gonna keep track of our page of our state with two variables one is going to be a select page which indicates whether our page is selected or not so it's going to be a boolean value so if i click select the select page is going to be set to true and if i unselect it it's going to be set to false and another one to select all of the records so if i click on select all then select all is set is going to be set to true and if i select again then the select all and select page both of them are going to be false so you'll understand better once we start working on it so what i'm going to do is define two more records two more states one is going to be select page which is going to be entangled with the select page attribute okay maybe we won't need the select page on the live wire side yep so we are going to keep this track on the alpine side only so select page is gonna be false by default and select all is also gonna be false by default so i'm gonna model this with this checkbox and then update the state accordingly so how do we do that let's go to our checkbox and here x model with select page save that and now if we check out alpine maybe we should reload it once we have this we have select page and select all to false and now if i click on select all our select page value sets to true and false accordingly so we'll use that to update our state of the page of the checked array so how do you do that we can just like in view we can define a watcher for select page so if this select page value is true then we'll populate the checked array otherwise we will again set the checked array to empty and then maintain the state accordingly so how do we define a watcher i think it's called x watch or something so we can define a watcher in x init let's copy that and go to the top to define a watcher we are gonna watch for okay let's check out the documentation okay open so we are gonna check it for select page and we are gonna pass that value to a function and let's call updated okay, select page updated so we are gonna call this function when whenever the select page value changes with the value that we have maybe we don't need to pass this because we also have the value in select page as well but we can can to any one of the options so let's define a select page updated function and here we can get the value then what we are gonna do if the value is true so in that case we need to select we need to populate our checked array with all of the items in the page so i think github copilot is actually right in this case so if the value is true then we are going to populate the checked array with all the items in the page otherwise we are going to set it to empty array so let's go ahead and test it out if i select all items then as you can see we are selecting 10 items that's really good and that goes away because we are since the select page value is false then we again initialize and uh, in, again set the checked array to an empty array so that works 
well if i select 20 items then we have 20 items in the page and if i select all of them then we are selecting all of the 20 items so that's really good now another thing that we need to do is selecting all of the items so we need to implement this part so that should be pretty simple as well we already have all students and the way we do that is let's go to what we need so if i think we need we can directly put it here x if x if select page is selected then we need to display this and if select all is selected then we aren't gonna display that now let's reload and i think this isn't working select page do we have select page yep okay, let's check out the if if talks okay we need to wrap that inside template okay maybe we can use x show as well to see how it works and let's reload okay that looks good to change this what we can do is x text and then we can pass the length of checked array now if i select 10 items then we are getting you are currently selecting all 10 items okay this should be select all and this should be select page so if i select this we are selecting okay we also need to update this x text is gonna be checked dot length and do you want to select all and this is gonna be any guesses the students all students array so since we have that all students array in here we can make use of that let's save that and reload you want to select all okay dot length g t h let's select you have selected 10 items you want to select all 93 items and we need to implement this thing so how do we do that on click what we can do is call a function called select all items let's copy this and define that function so what we are going to do here so on the select all items what we are going to do is set the select all to true to reflect the dom changes accordingly and then we are going to set the checked array to all the students and we also need to fix a small issue here we'll, which we'll see in a minute so if i go ahead and reload if i click on select all we are currently selecting all 10 items um, and then if i click on select on then we are actually selecting all of the 93 items but both of these are getting displayed so how do you fix that for that what we need to do is set the select page to false so that all the dom changes are reflected accordingly so now if i click on select click on select all okay i think we have an issue here and that's because okay the select page value changes and then this function executes and then this function executes so we have to make some changes on the dom side actually like on the condition check in here so we want to show the select all only if select all is set to true and select page is set to true and this only if this select page is set to true and select all is set to false right let's say let's see what we get we check we get this we select all we are currently selecting all 93 items and then we are currently checking all of them so that looks good and now if we uncheck that then we are we just remove everything and it works fine yep that's what we want right so this looks good and i think this is it for this video if we have any other issues i will address them in the upcoming videos so that's it for now and see you guys in the next one so in this part we'll be looking at excel exports we'll be using laravel excel package for this so let's go ahead and install this just gonna paste it in my terminal and in order to create an export i think that should be quite simple okay maybe we have an issue for laravel 9 and above what we need to do is we need to require this composer requires simple catch and then matrix website excel 
so i'll just paste that and wait for it to install and we don't have to do anything of any of these so from query we'll be using query for this so okay this is done let's create a new export students export that's done let's go to students export and it's not gonna be from collection but actually from query let's import that and we also need to use exportable i guess so let's go ahead and paste that and let's import and here what we are gonna do is student where key is gonna be so we'll be using the constructor for this and maybe you, we can use constructor property promotion which was i think introduced in something around 8 8 after 8 php 8 but i'm just going to use it the traditional way public students okay let's name it students and then we are going to receive the array of students in here and then it is going to be this students is going to be students and here we can directly pass this value and i think that's it so in order to export this what we can do is return new invoices export so this is we are we are going to call this function on the liveware component itself so let's go ahead and define a new function called call it export students and since we have okay we are going to receive the array of checked items and we are going to call the students export with the name of students i also want to append this timestamp and i'm going to pass the checked array so that's done and the last thing that we need to do is we need to go to the view of this component and maybe we also need to define a listener so just like we did with other items like deleting single records we can do the same so let's create a new function called export students and then we are going to emit export student with the value of this checked that looks good and where do we call this we can call that in here so that's on click we can call this function so whenever we click we are going to call export students and then this in turn is going to call export is going to emit a uh, an event called export students with the value of the checked array and then on the export students we need to define a listener okay i need to call export students so whenever this is triggered this is going to call this function and this is going to return a new response for the export okay maybe we need to check it out let's reload select 10 items we checked let's export okay our file looks good i can't open it because i don't have an xlx viewer maybe we can pass in the timestamp i'm stamp okay how do we call this thing okay let it be i'm just gonna keep it like this and that's it for the export feature so now we are gonna look at performing the sorting by column so for that we are gonna define two states again so one is the sort direction which is the ascending or descending and the sort field which could be the student name, email, address, or phone number. So by which field do we sort the data? So for that, we need to define two states. And we need to define them on both sides because on the front end, we'll make the DOM changes. So we'll use that value to display the arrow up and down accordingly. So I'm gonna define a sort field so it is gonna be name by default and sort direction is gonna be ascending so the default are gonna be these and 
how do we call them we can call them in here so order by sort field and sort direction so now if we go ahead and reload then you can see that we are displaying the data by student's name sending in sending order and the field is student's name so we need we just need to make these things dynamic so clickable whenever we click on email then we sort them by email so that the part that we need to implement now so in order to reflect this thing on in the front end we need to define those variables in here as well so sort field is gonna be let's entangle it to sort field and sort direction is gonna be entangled with sort direction value so we are going to use this state to reflect the values to reflect the arrows accordingly on the header so i'm gonna um, what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna paste some code in here so what this does is this is the up arrow and this is the down arrow in html and we want to show this if the sort direction is descending and the sort field is name so we'll show this arrow only if this condition meets and we are going to show the down arrow if the sort direction is ascending and the sort field is name i think i have named them right sort field and sort direction yep they look good and what we want to do whenever we click on it percent okay here so we can do what we can do here is we can actually implement this on the alpine side or live wire side as well so eventually what's going to happen is whenever we click on this link what we need to do is we need to change the value of these variables accordingly so i'm gonna what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna define a wire click function and call a function called change sort and pass the value of the field which is name in this case so what's gonna happen is i'm gonna call this function and pass in the value of name so okay, let's define and see how it goes so i'm, I'm gonna call to define the change sort on the live wire component itself and it's gonna receive the sort field value so what we are going to do here is we are going to check first that if this sort field that is the one that we already have so in this case uh, first let's say we have name so if this sort field that we receive is equal equal to the field that we are receiving as a parameter in here then what we are going to do is we are going to set only we are only going to toggle the sort direction because in our case the sort field and the field that we receive are same so we only need to change the sort direction and in this case the sort direction is going to be if the sort direction is equal equal to ascending then we are set it to descending otherwise so if this condition is set to false that means we have sort direction is set to descending so in that case we'll set it to ascending otherwise what we are going to do is we are going to set the sort field to the sort field that we receive so i think we should include that inside else otherwise it will run this all the code will run in every condition and yep that looks good so by default what's happened what's going to happen is let's say we have a sort field for name and then we click on email so this condition doesn't evaluate to true so we get here and we set the sort field to email and the sort direction is going to be whatever the sort direction previously was set so that's how it's going to work okay one last thing that we need to do is implement this on every page so let's check this and we'll implement it on other pages accordingly okay that looks good so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna copy this and paste that here though and we also need to copy these and let's change each of these one by one in this case it's gonna be email in this case is gonna be address and phone 
number and make sure while you are sending this value uh, make sure that you have this field in the database for in the model itself otherwise while we are sorting uh, in here it will throw an error that we don't have that field in the model itself so let's go ahead and so by default it's set to ascending for name email address phone number everything looks good in this part i'm gonna be addressing issues related to transitions and also there are some few issues like whenever we reload a page as you can see that for a slight second all the dom related uh, conditions that we are applying they just they get applied a little bit later so while the javascript is, uh, is loading that takes a bit of time to affect so that's why we are seeing those dom related issues so we'll fix that and there's one more i think okay i'll just address that while fixing it so first we need to implement some transitions so like when we, i click on this button we see this part and this button so we can apply transitions to them so okay for this part what we can do is yep let's include i'm gonna add simple transitions if you want you can further customize this transition by checking the docs let's also include that here and i think this is it we don't need more than that so now if i select we get a nice transition and that is it for the transition part the next thing that i want to do is implement fix the i don't know what it this thing is called but i think it's x cloak or something let's see so when we are using alpine js for our template there's a blip where we might see our uninitialized template after the page loads but before alpine loads so for that we'll be using the x cloak so what we need to do is we'll just copy the x cloak we need to define that as a property in our css so what i'll do is i'll just go ahead in my welcome play page and in here define a style so that it would apply to all of the pages and then on the template i'll just include the x cloak i think we can include it here I'm not really sure let's see okay we got an error probably we don't have any errors so we need to apply that x cloak property only on the where we are using the alpine related properties so on the this div so let's go ahead and check it once so now as you can see we are not seeing that blip or anything our page loads properly so there's no issues of down related issues now and another issue that i want to look into is i just noticed while i was using this is that if i just select this it works well but if i perform this sorting and then select then all these items these items do get selected but not from this page but from an, another page the first page that we rendered before so as you can see we have them selected here so that's not a good ux probably so what we want to do is whenever we change any of these sorts we want to reassign the students in page value so that we have the updated data accordingly so what i want to do is i want to just call the function whenever we change the sort and then assign the students in page to the students and then pluck the id and convert that to an array so now whenever we reload and then sort the items and then check then all of the items from this page get selected because we we have the updated we have the updated students in page and then the ux also works as as expected the same for email so that's good so i actually forgot to implement two stuffs one of them is i didn't include the flash messages so i just uh include the code to flash the session but we haven't included the file yet so we can't see if we delete any message there's no flash and another thing is i wanted to add a nice transition uh, implement the transition for the section so for now it is just uh, live wire doing the trick so i wanted to implement those two 
in this part so let's go ahead and do that so to include the flash messages what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna include a new folder and then define a file not live wire but flash or maybe you can do alerts dot blade dot php and i'm gonna paste a code paste the codes in here so i just want to want to type in so it will just um, display if the session has success and we are using bootstrap to design it so that should do the work and inside students list we can include that file so include what would be the name includes dot alerts let's save that and now if i delete any record we still don't get that so maybe we haven't added the flash or while we delete okay we have but it's message and what do we have in alerts okay we don't have that so let's do instead of success we need instead of message we need success and yep this should do the work and if i go ahead and delete it now we can see that we get the information the flash message so that's it for this part and the another thing that we want to do is implement the transition so this is done on the live wire side so what we can do is we can entangle we can introduce entangle for the selected section as well selected class as well and if that selected class is set then on the alpine side we can hide and show and then also implement the transition so first we need to go and define a new variable called selected class and it's gonna get entangled with selected class on the live wire side as well so to check whether we have a selected class what we can do is call x show and only show if the selected class is set and i'm going to introduce the x transition attribute so now if we go ahead okay we are getting this value and i was making a silly mistake i used x show like this but the general convention is to use x under dash show so now if we save this and reload now we'll get this and the x transition should work really well so that's really cool right so that's it for this uh, tutorial i hope you liked it if it was helpful don't forget to subscribe i'm gonna put more uh, videos like this in the future as well so that's probably gonna help my channel grow up and thanks for watching and see you guys in the next one